Hey guys and gals, this is Cal from Dirty Weasel. In this episode of the Skyrim Special Edition Modding Guide, we are going to discuss and convert SkyTweak for use in the Special Edition. What? You've never heard of SkyTweak? You're kidding, right? Okay, SkyTweak by Grimmy Binnyup is a mod that allows you to dynamically change hundreds of different values and settings in Skyrim through the mod configuration menu. It also reads configuration settings of the mods you have installed to tell you what they have been set to that allows you to adjust them further. All this means that SkyTweak can replace many other mods that you may have installed and set things to the way you want them. Furthermore, with the use of File Access Interface for Skyrim SE Scripts, or FISIS, you can save those settings for use every time you create a new character. This video will also touch on FISIS, showing you how other mods already utilize this tool and how you can add its functionality to even more select mods. Let's get to work. All right, here we are. This is the old fashioned way. We're going to the desktop first and then we're going to go right into the internet and they are going to the Skyrim Nexus. This is the original legacy edition versus Skyrim. And this is for SkyTweak and it is mod number 33395. It was created by Grimmy Bunyip back in the day, and you can see all the different screens I kind of flash through in the intro of what you can change. Let's just talk briefly about what it is. SkyTweak is an in-game menu with literally hundreds of game balancing options. When you slap a bunch of gameplay mods together, the end result is almost never going to be balanced. SkyTweak fixes that for you and often flat out replaces many smaller mods. You want to get an idea of what it is and what all the different features do? Go to this articles page right there and it will take you to this page and it will tell you everything that it does and this is an extensively long list but you get an idea of what you can do so just keep that in mind if you ever have a question about one of the tweaks that are included in SkyTweak go to this page and go look at the articles and know what it's doing of course this is for legendary edition and we're going to go ahead and convert it let's talk about the files under the file section, you will see that it has SkyTweak. And you'll see that the Grimmy's plugin is required. Let's talk about that. Grimmy's plugin doesn't do much else other than speed up the SkyTweak engine in when it's reading all the mods. So just keep that in mind that it's primarily just speeding things up. And I'll show you a little flash up in this corner of every time you start your game. SkyTweak will reread it so it will just run faster if you have the Grimmies plugin. But because it has a DLL in the plugin, it hasn't been converted to the newest use of Skyrim Special Edition Script Extender. That's what you, when you see this requirement, don't worry too much about it. You're also going to see some de things down here in the preset patches. This is for FISIS. I wouldn't worry about that just yet. We'll come back to it. But the thing you're going to do is download. 7.4 and just manually download it and put it in your desktop. And I've already done that. You can see it's right here. So the first thing we want to do is we have to convert it. Let's unpack it to my desktop. And of course I have it right there. Inside of this, you're going to find the interface, the BSA, and an ESP. So the first thing we need to do is unpack the BSA. And for that, of course, we use Bethesda Archive Extractor. You've seen me use it in many other conversion videos. But let's just open it up and we'll just do it because you can always go back and look at the other ones. So now that we have it open, let's go ahead and select the skytweak.bsa and we're going to slide it over and drop it into Bethesda Archive Extractor. And you can see inside we have a bunch of scripts, unsurprisingly, scripts, scripts, scripts. So what do we want to do? We want to extract it back into the skytweak folder and we know it's 33395714. So we are going to extract it out on our desktop, and we're looking for SkyTweak 33395 interface. So we have the same thing. It's not going to recognize the BSA or the ESP, but this is the right file. Select the folder. And of course, everything's been dropped over on the other page in the main folder for SkyTweak. We can now close Bethesda Archive Extractor. Now we've created a loose file folder when we delete the BSA. And there we go. Now all we have is interface, scripts, and an ESP. Without the BSA there, it'll know just to access the scripts normally. So that's step one. It is ready to convert into the special edition. Let's open up Mod Organizer. 
Of course, I am going to switch over first thing. Whenever I convert a mod, I switch to my default profile that doesn't have any other mods activated. Just for safety's sake, I'm going to go ahead and activate SKSE 64 scripts. This isn't entirely necessary, but I just do it for safety's sake to make sure that it's active and running. To save ourselves a step here, we're going to open up our Skyrim Special Edition folder where we keep Mod Organizer. Of course, mine's Ender PC, Games, Steam, Steam Apps Common, and you can see Skyrim Special Edition Mod Organizer 2 right there. And we are just going to drop the entire folder for SkyTweak into Mods. When you refresh it, SkyTweak will end up down at the bottom. Go ahead and activate the mod. So in your plugins, all you have is skytweak.esp. And that is the only thing we're going to load into this. And let's just go ahead and do our drop down menu, go into the creation kit, which is how we convert all of our mods and run the creation kit. Of course, we want to open the file and it's up here in the upper left. You click on that and you want to see SkyTweak and we do. Double click on it and that will select the mod and set as the active file. Now you press OK. Okay, it took quite some time to get there. If it, you know, took a little time, just let it do its thing. And it's going to throw a bunch of messages at you if it's properly configured. So the only thing that might be of concern is magic item GBT cloak enabled on hit dot underscore ENT is an aim, but has no magic effect. Go ahead and hit clear, and then you're going to save the mod. And just like that, it's done. It doesn't have to run through very much. It did most of its work on the scripting early on the process. Go ahead and close it down. Now, of course, I'm using the latest version of Mod Organizer 2, and it's version 2.1.3. If you're not using that, I recommend that you do so. And the newest versions of Mod Organizer do not put any contents from the creation kit into your overwrite anymore. It automatically puts them back into the mod that it was pulling from. In this case, it is SkyTweak. Let's go ahead and right click on it and open it in Explorer. And you can see the date that we just ran it at is 12.52 p.m. And that runs right in line with today's time, date and time, knowing that when we extracted it was earlier on, and this is the newest version, so you know it was converted properly inside the creation kit. We're gonna close that down. The first thing we want to do is we're going to open up where we keep our mods in Mod Organizer 2. Of course, that's in common, like I mentioned before. Skyrim Special Edition, go into Mods and grab that Sky Tweak. There it is. Now you have one of two options at this point. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to rename it. And I'm just going to call it Sky Tweak underscore SE. Like I said, two options now. You can either leave it there or you can do what I do and I make copies of everything. So I'm going to add to an archive Sky Tweak SE dot RAR. I'm going to press OK and we will go find it and I'm going to cut it out of the mods menu and place it back on my desktop. So now I have a clean mods folder with no archives in it, but I also have the SkyTweak SE.RAR and I can go safely stash this away somewhere, hmm, like inside of my downloads. Let's do that. Drag it and drop it in. Now it's automatically placed it inside of your download folder wherever you keep them. Of course, I keep them on a dump drive. And we can now go ahead and remove the old mod and we can now reinstall the SkyTweak SE version. Manual, looks good. Let's go ahead and set data directory. Looks good, press OK, and there we have it. So, now we have SkyTweak SE all ready to go, and we know what to do with this. Let's talk about placement on SkyTweak. I'm gonna go back to my Dirty Weasel Media profile, and I'm going to activate it, and the documentation from Grimmy Bunyip says it wants to be fairly low, but let's find out what this conflict is and we'll see what it is. Okay, it is overriding violence, a kill move mod SE. Let's slide it up and we'll take a closer look at that. I'm side by side here. What is being changed? Look at look at the conflicts. The interface ulib dot text up F S W F. These are all interface things. I would say in this case, Let's move SkyTweak above Violence because really I want the newer scripts from Violence because this is a been a converted mod to win over the old SkyTweak. So I'm going to push it relatively high up, probably right around the Papyrus Util portion. So that's probably where it should sit. 
So it's run relatively early and get its things going, and then it'll run through the rest of the mods and it will read it. But that's how SkyTweak works. It reads your other mods, so I want to have it running relatively soon. Let's talk about plugins. I am using the latest version of Loot, and I want to go ahead and see where Loot puts this because it is not an SSE mod, Loot may not what to do, know what to do with this. I know, I need to clean stuff. Let's scroll all the way down to SkyTweet. We haven't changed anything yet. Let's go and sort the plugins and see what happens. It has put it somewhere else. Let's go find it because really that's not gonna work for us. Let's cancel that out. And the documentation from Grammy Bunyip basically says that SkyTweet wants to be loaded relatively late in your load order. Because Loot no longer uses a priority system, it uses a grouping system. When you go into the metadata, edit the metadata, you'll see that it's grouped with default. You want to go ahead and say this is, just scroll down and find late loaders. There we go. And then save it. And let's see what it does now, because I want it relatively late in the thing, but let's see what Loot does with it. Scroll down again. And you can see SkyTweak is much farther down now. So this is probably an appropriate place for this. And I wouldn't worry about Realistic Water 2, ELE, or any of these patches making any changes to SkyTweak of any note. So I'm perfectly fine with that load loader. I'm gonna say, go ahead and apply it. And there you go. You can now see it is much lower in our load loader, but it was up in the mid 40s before. That's way too high because I want it to be loading after things. If you ever worry about any of the mods overriding things, you can just go into SSE edit and I can almost guarantee that SkyTweak in this position won't be changing anything, but that's just how I want to have it. According to Grimmy Bunyip, the original mod author, he wants to have it relatively low in your load order. So now is a good time to go into your game and check to make sure it is running properly. All right, we are now loading into game. I just popped into Riverwood and we're going to wait to see when the SkyTweak configures itself. So we're just waiting through all the messages here. SkyTweak took 6.4.05998 seconds. And that's with a relatively full load order. Once all of your MCMs have all kind of loaded in and most of your mods have, have configured themselves, let's open up the MCM and take a look. Mod configuration, you should see SkyTweak. There it is. And of course, like I said, it's going to have all sorts of stuff right away. So right the first page, you'll see here's your saves and settings. And we'll come back to this, but basically know that this is where it's going to be. Like I said, all these different values are going to be all over the place. And you can change them using sliders or buttons or whatever it may be. But have fun with it. Go back and look at that page I showed you to understand what's going on. But you do know that all of these values have been changed by your other mods and SkyTweak has read them and reflected the numbers appropriately. Let's go ahead and head back out of game. Okay, now that we have SkyTweak properly installed, let's go ahead and talk about the other component to this. And that is the FIS, the file interface for Skyrim SE scripts or FISs. If you look at what this does, it basically allows you to save settings from one save to the next. In other words, from each character, it will allow you to create a file that you drop into FIS that will set configuration settings for each mod that it is running. In this case, a mod like Matter of Time, a HUD clock widget, already has the necessary files to let FISIS run. As long as you have it, you can save settings into the files and then recall them every time you start a new character. There are also settings inside of SkyTweak, remember these two files right here, for iHUD and MoreHUD, that allow you to configure the Immersive HUD for Special Edition and MoreHUD for Special Edition, and they work just fine. The other one for SkyUI, under extensive testing, it does not work. That tells me that something in the operation of SkyUI 5.0 2 or 5.3, I forget, is no longer allowing this FISIS preset to work. But you can definitely get iHUD and MoreHUD to work just fine. So let's talk first about the file access interface for a special edition. It is mod number 13956. It was done by Terrence Yao, 
and you can read through this stuff and understand what's going on and look at all of his updates. But the thing we're interested in is the file section. And you can see there is file interface access for Skyrim Special Edition scripts. You can download that with Manager. There's also one that is a non ESMify. I don't think that it's really necessary to do this. I would think just the most recent version using this file for FISIS 1.3.3 will work just fine. Download that into your mod manager. And of course, I have already done so. It is right there. I'm going to hide SkyTweak. So with that downloaded, let's go back to SkyTweak and grab those two presets for iHUD and MoreHUD. Of course, if you're using the latest version of Mod Organizer 2, you can just download Manager on both of those and they will end up in your download section. And you see I have them in my downloads ready to go. So what do we do with this? Well, the first thing we need to do is install file access interface for Skyrim SSE scripts or FISIS. And we will go ahead and do this, double click to install, manual, and you see it's scripts, SKSC, and an ESP. Looks good. It's gonna be down here at the bottom. Go ahead and activate it, and you're going to slide it up above every mod, it's very important, every mod that may utilize FISIS. I'm gonna place it right around the Papyrus Util, but above SkyTweak, because SkyTweak utilizes FISIS. Just so I remember things. Also, Immersive HUD uses FISIS. A Matter of Time uses FISIS and more HUD uses FISIS. There may be other mods later on that uses it, but this is where you want to have it relatively high up. So that's step one. We're gonna go through everything all at once. So it is properly installed. Let's go ahead and install the patch for more HUD. Of course, I have more HUD and it's right there. And what do we do with it? Well, let's go ahead and install it. And we're going to kind of follow my old way of doing things, and that is called preset patch grouping. And I'm going to rename it to FISIS presets, more HUD, I HUD, and click manual. And you can see all it is is scripts. It's gonna be down here at the bottom. Don't worry about this warning sign because it really doesn't know what to do with things. And we can go ahead and ignore the update. We're going to do the same thing for the preset patch for iHUD. Go ahead and double click it to install it. You can see it's already auto selected the FISIS presets for more HUD and iHUD. Manual, scripts, looks okay. And we're going to merge it in with the same one that we use for more HUD, merge. Now inside of this mod, we have scripts. You can see AHZ config menu, that's more HUD, and then iHUD. Sky UI config menu script.pex. Both these are PEX files, they're scripts, and these are perfectly fine. Go ahead and close that down. What do you do with these? Well, you're going to need to place them after the mods that they affect. Before we said FISIS needs to be before the mods they affect, the FISIS presets need to be after them. And you can see there's the FISIS presets for more HUD and iHUD below more HUD SE and below Immersive HUD SE, because that's what it's doing. It's adding the presets to the mods themselves. So just keep that in mind where FISIS itself needs to be above the mods it's affecting. The presets for more HUD and iHUD need to be below them so that they're adding the scripts to them. Back in Mod Organizer 1 in the Legendary Edition days, you would actually have conflicts but because more HUD and Immersive HUD are packed in BSAs and Mod Organizer 2 doesn't have BSA conflict detection, they don't register those scripts as being overwritten, but it's very important that they do so. They're there and they're getting loaded before any loose files, but you just need to remember that loose files will always come after BSAs and you want them to load after the mods. Plugins on this. FISIS is an ESP. If you ran loot, and we'll do so, you'll hit sort, and it said no, sorting made no changes. Okay, that's fine. Let's close it. FISIS is gone. And where is it? it you notice it was in bold, and that's because it's an ESP that is treated as an ESM. So even though you won't know what to do with it exactly, Run loot and loot will place it at the top with the other ESMs because it is an ESP that's been ENSified. Make sense?
OK. So that is all installed. We've installed FISIS. We've installed the FISIS presets for More HUD and Immersive HUD. Let's go back into game and talk about what you need to do. OK, we're back into Riverwood, and we've let the MCMs all populate, all the mods configure up, and we know what, that we can now go into the MCM. This is a fresh save, so nothing's been configured yet. When you go into mod configuration and you go to any of the mods that have FISIS, and that includes Sky Tweak, A Matter of Time, more HUD, iHUD, and any other mods that may use FISIS, you can go ahead and save the presets. Let's just talk about Sky Tweak first because it's probably the most confusing. And we will scroll down to Sky Tweak. Of course, first page right off the bat. You can see now that it makes sense that we can load settings from FISIS or save settings from FISIS. My advice to you is do not mess with any of these other settings. You either want to load it or save it. Since we don't have any loaded settings from FISIS yet, we want to save a setting. So let's go ahead and just change something. Let's call it Temper Scaling. And we will go ahead and go back into Options. And we will now save the settings to FIS. S, FISIS. Save the settings. Are you sure? Wait for a completion message if you accept yes. Done saving says to FIS. OK, it is done. Press accept. And you can do the same thing with any other mods that may use FISIS. Go to the presets after you've changed something in the like the activation or anything like that and save the preset. I'll need to change this to I. Just so it has something to write. Presets and save the preset. Are you sure you want to save a preset? Yes. Done saving preset. That is pretty much the pattern you'll go through for all of the mods that use FIS. So I'm going to go through and do a few more so you can see some examples when we load these back into Mod Organizer 2. OK, we are back at our desktop and we are at Mod Organizer 2. And the first thing you'll notice is that there's a warning that we have things in our overwrite. And the reason why Mod Organizer didn't put these back into where they belong is it is a newly generated files and they don't really know where they belong. So let's open up our overwrite. And you can see it's SKSE, Plugins, FIS. This is the key phrase to tell you where these need to go. And inside of this, you see the four configuration XML files that need to go into FIS. So what do we do with this? We're going to scroll up to FIS, and we're going to drag it and drop it into the file access interface for Skyrim SE scripts or FISIS. There we go. Now inside of this, if you open up your file tree and you look at SKSE, Plugins, FIS, you can see the AMOT settings, the dummy XML, the iHUD, the more HUD, and the sky tweak. So it's all ready to go. That's AMOT is a matter of time, iHUD, more HUD, and sky tweak. All right, that is properly configured. Now that that is done, if you make any changes into either of those mods, it won't end up in your override again because now it knows to place them inside of the file access interface for Skyrim SE scripts, FISIS. Now you need to go back into game. I know this is confusing and it's long term, but trust me, go back into game. So once again, we are back with a brand new character on a new save, the whole thing. And we can now install those presets. Open up your MCM again, go to mod configuration, and look for one of the mods that had the presets. Let's look for Sky Tweak again. Now on the first page, you have load from settings from FISIS. We are not saving new ones. We are loading this one. Now this is very important. Anytime you load a setting from FISIS, you can then use that setting for an existing character, a new character, or anytime you want to change the settings in your game. You're loading the settings from FIS. Just keep that in mind. It doesn't matter what save you're on. If you don't like the settings, you can go back to the ones you've saved before, but you can only save one at a time. That's because of the limitations that I found that you don't want to work with it. Just remember, these file names, don't go changing them. Just keep them the way it is. You're going to have a favorite set of settings for FISIS, and that's the way you're going to go with. In this case, we want to apply the settings we had from FISIS. 
Are you sure? Wait for completion mission to accept. Yes. Downloading settings from Fist XML. On tweaks, it was temper scaling. See? It works. It works just fine. So just keep that in mind. Everything will work the same way. If you go to More HUD, Matter of Time, iHUD, whatever it may be, it will load the settings that you've saved previously. And you can use them on new characters. You can use them on a character that you've already changed some settings before. But it will work every single time. But just remember, once you override them, that's the settings you have. You can only have one. Keep that in mind. So that's where we're going to leave it here, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hate doing plugs, but here it is. If you did enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I've also started a Discord server where you can chat with me if you have questions or just want to say hi. You can also join me on my weekly Twitch streams where we do live modding and play games. Or even follow Dirty Weasel Media on Twitter. All the links are in the description of this video. My name's Cal, I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off.